Hey hey, how's it going guys? My name is Elwood and today we're taking a look at Wilmot's Warehouse, a simple little game released a year ago that has been made free to download on Epic Games this week and to answer the ultimate question, is it worth your time? So Wilmot's Warehouse is a single slash multiplayer indie casual puzzle game where you play as an overly happy square obviously named Wilmot. You'd be organising large amounts of stock, serving your various colleagues, all while trying to maximise your performance star earnings. So aesthetically, as you probably noticed, the game's visuals are extremely simple. Everything appears to have a minimalist, charming, hand-drawn look to it with plenty of positive faces and creative designs to give it a consistent, light-hearted, childish feel. Although there's quite a heavy focus on the square shape for the characters and stock items, this game shouldn't be considered pixel art since the actual art lacks the actual pixels. Colours used are primarily black and white for everything including the warehouse and characters. The actual stock items, however, are much more vibrant with good use of contrasting and simple colours consistently, likely for visual impact when comparing them to everything else. Lighting effects aren't technically present in this game, except for the kind of shadow effects that fade in stock designs and colours when approached. The only other effect I noticed were the odd animation effects when dashing or moving stock in some way, which although few, are just enough to create a more than acceptable visual standard. Textures, detail and ground clutter are quite non-existent as expected, since the only place you're going to be seeing in the whole game is your little warehouse. Fortunately, it does come fully equipped with diagonal line wallpaper, a couple of warehouse related items, a serving hatch and a skip. Everything you could possibly need. The actual stock squares are very well made and easy to distinguish from each other most of the time. Until you start to get over seven different stock items with mixed up order of circles and four different types of bananas. Only then are you truly living the dream. The UI is very nice. Extremely simple arrangement on screen of your time date and performance stars with nice opacity borders to give a surprisingly professional look to them. Other screens like your manifest, map and posters are all very simple and easy to understand once you manage to unlock them. Level layouts are exactly what you're looking at, one decently sized warehouse that you do have the option to kind of expand as you get further through the game. Character designs are pretty decent for the game's art style, Wilmot has various facial gestures and stronger smiles depending on how well you do and if it's currently stock day. Because take my word for it, he fucking loves stock take day. Other characters like your fellow colleagues have actual humanoid body shapes, but Wilmot's manager and your robot friend seem to have a more basic shape to match Wilmot. So who knows, they may be related. Overall, a very light-hearted visual design that easily creates a laid-back and calming atmosphere. The OSTs in Wilmot's warehouse are not the best in all honesty, but not exactly the worst either. Very modern SFX sounds used with the occasional orchestral sound here and there that gives each track a calm, light-hearted, gentle, almost futuristic feel to them. Most of the 14 soundtracks in the game are basically the same soundtrack on repeat with ever so slight differences to the effects used. Like during the delivery phase, service phase or when you're looking at your posters, map or pausing the game. Due to the extremely simple nature of the game, this does make perfect sense which is completely fine with me, but with extended play the soundtracks can border into tedious territory at times since it wasn't exactly an exceptional bass track to begin with. I did however enjoy Borky's take on the bass track due to its incredibly more robotic vibes. Plus simply watching him attempt to play stock where you want it is funny in itself. Everything else I'm related though is pretty good. Things like moving the various stock, interacting with colleagues and Borky moving around all sound very crisp and create a very clean immersive experience, especially when acquiring a lot of performance stars. Definitely not the greatest sound quality in the world, but luckily gets the job done fine. Now for the gameplay. So surprisingly, Wilmot's Warehouse actually does have more than one difficulty option to choose from before you play. You can choose between Normal or Expert mode. Normal is your standard game mode as anyone would expect, but Expert I feel is more like custom mode. This mode gives you a small selection of changes you can make to the standard difficulty which makes the game in general a bit more difficult. But don't worry, nothing exactly over the top ball breaking. When you first start the game, you're brought straight to a short training area that introduces you to the game's 
basic controls and simple concept. There's no real mention of a starting plot for the game's story, but from the short dialogue and the game's title alone, it's quite easy to determine exactly what's going on. But for those unsure, you play as a very enthusiastic square named Wilmot, you work for an asshole manager named CJ. Side note, CJ may seem like an okay manager throughout your playthrough, but I can assure you towards the end of the game, he's definitely an asshole. The purpose of the game is quite literally warehouse management. Stock comes in via a silent delivery driver. Stock needs to get sorted by you, the player, although not mandatory. Stock needs to then go out via your also silent co-workers, then rinse and repeat. So once you've chosen your difficulty, you take on the quite informative introduction training mission, then take control of your character and play. The controls are very hard to get used to. Well, if you've never played any kind of game in your entire life, that is. If like the vast majority of the gaming community, you have played at least a few, you can figure out these controls with your eyes closed. You have your basic movement controls as anyone would expect, with the addition of picking up stock within close proximity and moving said stock around. If you're playing with a mouse and keyboard, you need to left click stock squares next to you to pick them up. You can double click stock to pick up all squares of the same icon, or if you want to target multiple stock squares of all different types, you can hold left click over all the squares you wish to move. The controls are a bit different if you're playing with a controller or on the switch. You pick up squares by looking at them and pressing the pick up button. You can hold down the button to pick up all stock of the same icon, and you need to look at individual squares and select one to pick up multiple different stock items at once. Which I suppose if you can look at and click relatively quickly, you should be able to do so quite seamlessly. You also have the ability to rotate stock squares 90 degrees, regardless of what objects you have in the way, provided the new location for the stock is not obstructed. Wilmot does however have a stock limit that he can carry, which will result in extremely slow hauling when exceeded. As expected, you'll be using these incredible abilities of yours to process stock from delivery all the way to service in the time frame specified. The game is broken down into years, quarters and months, each month having four new stock items to deal with, one stock and one service phase, and each quarter having one stock take, which gives you unlimited time to arrange your items. But regardless, all good old CJ cares about though is the end result, which is simply getting specific stock to your co-workers in a specified time limit. Organising the stock in the warehouse is completely up to you and can be done so in whatever order or fashion you see fit. The possibilities are pretty much endless. I personally organise the stock in categories of type. Some of these included technological, food items, large objects and no idea what the fuck this is. And trust me, that last category was pretty much swamped. The game doesn't tell you the actual name of each stock item, so the ones that you can't really identify can only be interpreted by your imagination. Keep in mind you only get a certain amount of time between serving co-workers to arrange your stock, so try not to make it too fancy unless during a stock take. When serving your colleagues you have the potential to earn varying amounts of performance stars based on how fast you can serve them. Performance stars are this game's currency which are spent on various passives and simple abilities to help you out around the warehouse. These include increasing your carry capacity, obtaining a dash ability and recruiting the almighty Borky, the king of inefficient stock control. If you're really good however, you can even pay an extortionate amount of stars for a pair of completely pointless dungarees. But remember, only for the truly exceptional stock manager of course. Other than that though, the gameplay experience is pretty open to your imagination and is generally quite laid back throughout its entirety. You obviously don't have any enemies or bosses to kill in a puzzle game like this, although your meetings with CJ for not getting your stock out on time could be considered something on those lines due to the somewhat traumatic experience if you're seriously immersed in stock managing gameplay. Overall, a short, simple gaming experience that will keep you busy with ease, especially if you're a big fan of organisation. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? Its extremely simple gameplay and concept are a delight for anyone seeking a short puzzle game experience that somewhat provides a light-hearted perspective from the real-life world of logistics. I'm going to give this game a 4 star or 75 out of 100. The game is charming, laid back and quite fun. I feel it would be especially good for teaching logistics and developing memory skills for the younger audience and a welcome challenge for those new to gaming. For the more serious gamer, this may 
may not be your cup of tea, but I have to say it definitely wasn't a bad experience. I like the very to the point visuals and art style that keeps everything clean and simple. The feel of the controls and abilities are very nice, and the performance star collect and spend system was perfectly fine. The ending of the game was exceptionally anticlimactic though, with not so much as a story roundup or a soft core cliffhanger to speak of. Your mechanical helper, Borky, as mentioned, was often more of a hindrance than a blessing if you're like me and prefer to organise your stock in closely packed rows. The total 200 different stock items I personally found to be way too much. Around the 80 to 140 mark, I was comfortably memorising stock locations and sorting them in an enjoyable manner, but from 160 to 200 stock items, I literally couldn't be asked anymore. I ended up letting the stock pile up in the middle of the room and worked my orders around the huge bulk until completion. I found somewhere online that originally there were a whopping 500 different stock items to sort. Fuck me, they must be joking. 500. 120 was the sweet spot for me, not four times the fucking amount. If they increased the amount of stock received rather than the amount of different stock added, I think I would have had a much more satisfactory experience. But remember, this is of course just my preference. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I should be reviewing each week. And never ever forget guys, if life gets you down, remember it could be worse, you could be a passive aggressive pentangle named CJ. So always, always count your blessings. But anyways, all the best guys, take care.